Louis Calvert Jr. is the light in the darkness. That when he said, did y'all hear that? He said, I'm the light in the darkness. All right, um, I'm gonna adjust this mic because I think I might have grown like two inches. <laughs> and so since the last time y'all saw him went through puberty. Um, so, um, okay. So I'm going to get started. Obviously, I'm the creator of Louisiana Words. I just want to thank everyone that's here tonight because everyone that's here reading has helped build Louisiana Words, and we're going far, and I'm taking you with me. Um, one of the biggest things um, I have issues struggling with is this idea of what an American is, and I think if um, we focus more on what we found that we had in common, we wouldn't spend so much time trying to uh, make each other... Um, I don't know where I'm going from. I grew up in Monroe, Louisiana. Um, it was very difficult. I am someone that is of American, African American descent. So I spent a lot of my time having that question because I never acted like a black person or anything like that. And then it really started to get to me about how we're supposed to perform for people like our gender or our race. And I think a lot of times that we get anxieties about how we should be perceived based on our differences. And I just want to wipe all that away. Um, this is probably, I would say, is my staple piece that I read multiple times to people, uh, to different groups. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with that. It's called American Like Me. Hispanics speak Spanish to me. Airports are afraid I'm a Muslim. Blacks think I sound like a white person. No one has a clue what the hell I am. Maybe I just might be American. Though my birth certificate says I'm black, when you look at me, I see confusion in your face. Is that too much to ask I just be American? I feel sorry for the children that are American like me. Too scared to love the ones they love, growing up told to pick sides. Children stumble when they can't bubble in American on a standardized test. I don't know any more what white is than black, and when I was a child I always thought that they were crayons. But now I know damn well that there is no crayon called American. children's story and um, I wrote it wrote, actually the first time I read this is for Lafayette High School when I was the uh, Canadian Pride president um, I just believe as a you know as parents or as uh, role models that we should really be encouraging our children just to be themselves as you know the reason I created Louisiana Words is because of the Sandy Hook shooting in Connecticut where obviously kids were victims of mass shootings and um, we see a lot of our children struggling right now with their identities, and we know we come from, uh, especially in Louisiana, we come from a tougher landscape where it's hard sometimes to be able to express yourself the way you want to express yourself. But um, this story is called um, The Little Girl Who Wanted to Be King, okay? All right, boys, hold it down. King Pete beat the jungle gym with a large stick like a gravel gavel. The jungle boys is meeting now. He climbed to the top of the jungle gym and sat on top of them as if he were above a kingdom. In the distance on the other side of the playground, there was a playhouse where all the ones the jungle boys didn't speak of spent their time. The Wasteland. The Jungle Boys was an all excuse of all boys club that met during morning and afternoon recess. Pete was the eldest second grader of Miss Marion's class at near nine years old, and therefore it felt that gave him the leadership of the club. Roll call went as follows. Andy, Jimmy, Johnny, Jamil, Bill, Justin, Matt, Tommy, Sims, and Judd. Here, they all chanted in unison. All right, first business. The jungle here is getting too small for the membership. We need to vote on a new location to have our meetings. King Pete poked up his chest and then looked across the playground. It's a big land out there. The swings, Andy screamed to get only the first sentence at every meeting. Everyone gave him a funny look because there were no such things as swings in their world. I mean, the vineyard. I like that idea, Jimmy added. Me too, Johnny went along with Jimmy. The vineyard, Sam's cheers, some of the others joining in. What's a vineyard, John Judd asked. It's where, all the it's where there are a bunch of vines and moats. Justin whispered to Judd, but the courts are bigger, Matt said. Yes, yes, Matt is right. The courts, the basketball courts, are bigger. We could all have a big space for ourselves, start territories. The boys cheered to, uh, at King Pete's words. But what about the jungle? What will happen to it? What if the ones we don't speak of take over the jungle? Tommy wasn't sold on chain usually. Tommy always asked simple questions and Pete, Pete wondered if Tommy secretly wanted to be the leader. Hmm, well, the jungle would now have to be a territory of ours. This is the beginning and we must protect it. I like that idea, Jimmy said. Me too, Johnny went along with Jimmy. 
perfect. The jungle seems sheer. Wait, protect the jungle seems sheer. Some of the others joining in. But how can we live in the jungle and the courts at the same time? Tommy asks. Meanwhile, the wasteland. This is where Jessie spent most of her time wishing she was playing with the boys and, and she wished she was a part of their secret club and that wasn't really a secret. Jessie wanted to be a jungle boy, but as always, she was stuck with Bart, who wasn't really interested in being in the club anyway. They joined the girls at recess playing House or Red Rover because they were not allowed to join the jungle boys. That's it, I wanna go over there. Come with me, Bart. Jessie jumped off the ground away from the imaginary dinner table where she always played the husband. Um, a, a unanimous decision by all the girls in the park. She grabbed Bart by the arm and dragged him away from playing the brother who was interested in table decorations, family <laughs> prayers, and helping his sisters with their dance routines. I don't want to go, Bart dug his heels in the ground and Jesse pulled him. We were about to have dinner, a lasagna, which I helped mom make. Come on, I don't like secrets kept from me. They won't let us join, Jesse March. I said I don't want to join. They play on those dirty bars. Bart would not stop resisting back in the jungle. Are we still going to be the Jungle Boys, Joe asked? Are we going to be the Court Boys? That's a stupid question, Jimmy added. Yeah, yeah, Johnny went along with Jimmy. Forever the Jungle Boys, Sim sheared and looked at Judd. You're stupid, Judd. That's exactly, that's actually a good question, Tommy suggested. We can't be the Jungle Boys living at the courts. Fine, we'll be called the Jungle Court Boys. Kim Pete slammed down his sticks so hard because he wanted to move things along. That is that. We move tomorrow and Jamil and Phil will guard the jungle because they are the youngest. Jesse marched up to the jungle gym with Bart standing away uninterested. I want to speak to your leader. The ones we don't speak of, the chorus of boys panting. What do you want, boyish girl and girly boy? King Pete yelled from the top of the jungle. You don't fit in here. I want to be a jungle boy, Jesse demanded. Joe began laughing hysterically, but you're not a boy. That's funny. He kept laughing for a long time. One of those long, awkward laughs when no one else is laughing. She's like, not a boy, you see? He laughed more. You and him cannot join our rules, King Pete, Pete Grin. I don't care about your stupid secret club. I'm going to go play Red Rover, Bart left. Well, then I challenge you, Jessie swelled out her chest to Pete. All the boys were silent. Pete couldn't believe this girl challenged him. He had to do something. Ha, huh, how could you possibly challenge me? King Pete climbed down from the jungle, uh, from the jungle and stood in front of Jessie, who was the same height as him, but slightly broader. We play king at the pit, Jessie said. Hey, Judd's eyebrows went up. The balance beams, dummy, Justin whispered. I'm not going to duel a girl at the pit, he Pete laughed, but he was nervous at the possibility of losing power. Oh, you scared? Jesse pushed Pete with a finger. The boys were shocked. They looked for Pete to make his move. I will not challenge a girl to a duel. It's pointless. But she challenged him, I pointed out. So, Pete Pearl, I think she's boy enough to challenge him. Tommy also pointed out. I like the idea, Jimmy added. Me too, Johnny went along with Jimmy. Duel, Sam's chair, and, this, and others joined in. They were running against, but things were turning against Pete. And so to the pit. Jesse took her position at one end and Pete at the other. Balancing themselves, they moved slowly towards each other. Jesse pushed Pete and he almost lost balance. He regained himself and then he lunged at Jesse, who jerked a bit. Pete lunged at her again. This time she grabbed him by the skull and pushed him backward off the pit. Pete fell onto his back and knocked the wind out of him, causing him to cry. The boys laughed. He cried off to tell Miss Marion. Jessie didn't care, for she had succeeded, and she pumped her fist like she had just won a gladiator battle. I'm king! I'm king of the Jungle Boys! The boys all looked at her. Andy, Jimmy, Johnny, Jamil, Phil, Justin, Matt, Tommy, Sims, and Judd. King Jesse! Sam cheered, and all the others joined, impressed by Jesse's strength. Now, let us go to the wasteland and make peace with the girls, formerly known as the ones the Jungle Boys don't speak of. Jesse laid a line. We will expand our land beyond the jungle and the courts under my Thank you. Um, today is um, transgender remembrance, and one of the things about Louisiana words is that um, you are forever when you're posted, and we, we share you, and we have lost some people. And I want to read something about um, for transgender remembrance today by my old friend, past friend, who's no longer with this carrying over. I collided with the sky. I'm suffocating the clouds of bliss. To re return is to die. To find purchase is fear. Yet I must remember. I must see the Father, Mother Moon to soothe. Thank you, Mother, for your blessings. Forgive me. Father, grant me my old strength. Forgive me. So let it be. A prayer from a modern white two spirit. That was Transition Ambition by Carrie Ann Ogard. Um, and she was one of my best trans friends, and um, she will always be with me. Thank you very much.
afternoon. Um, sometimes with Louisiana words, it's like, you know, anyone can know. I, I share sometimes the stats and insights for everybody what their favorite pieces are. Um, I held the number one poem in Louisiana words for like seven years, and it was something I hated. And it was just so <laughs> weird, because it was like, it's like, when I read this, I mean, it's like, it sucks to me. But it went viral on Valentine's Day. It's a Valentine's Day poem, and I'm going to end with this here. Uh, it's called I Love You Is Enough. Please don't stress. I see what you do all year. Every day you show me through your actions how much you care for me. Please don't stress. It's not for money or possessions that I give my life to you. It's the moments that are small when people don't care to look that you show your love most. Don't stress to demonstrate what you've already known you do. Just say I love you. And my underworld, come on. All right. So.